Hey everybody, it's Mr. Paul Adams and welcome to You Country, the country music show that's all about you. Kinda. So today we are talking to a couple of friends of mine who I met uh, a few years ago at the Live in the Living Room Gives Back events at the Bedford in Ballam, run by our first guest, James Vince. Uh, a very, very lovely couple and a very, very strong singer-songwriter team. So without further ado, let's welcome Tennessee Twin. <laughs> So hello, Tennessee Twin, uh, Jeff and Victoria, how you doing? Hi, oh, good, thank you. Doing very well, thanks Paul, good lovely to see, to see you. you. Thank you, man, and nice to see you guys as well. I, I'm looking at all those books on the background and I'm thinking, oh my God, I could never have read all those. Have you read them all? I, I have read them all and some more than once, yeah. <laughs> okay, I might have to rethink this quiz, you know. I think <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think you I might know say, too much. They're, they're very specific genres, though. Well, no, there's a, there's a mixture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've tapped into something there right okay so uh, we'll, we'll start off uh, well first of all welcome on to uh, your country the country music show that's all about you kind of um so we'll start with the first question what was your musical life before tennessee twin and how did it transform into tennessee twin and country music Ooh. uh well i guess um i started i started learning piano when i was five so I think from then on and then I was violin and so I was playing in orchestras and singing in choirs and all that kind of stuff through my teens and then I joined my first band when I was about 20 um but yeah I've really been working the function and cabaret scene for most of my life um but always always wanted to do a country band um I'll let you interject with your history there before we go any further <laughs> oh right okay yeah so um a bit like Victoria I, I started playing music, um, predominantly my paternal grandfather was a musician and uh, you'd say when Sunday afternoons when you go around for tea you, you had to pick something up and play it so I, I started on guitar and then uh, for reasons I can't quite remember took up brass actually and ended up in a brass band, a village brass band and uh, went up through all the musical grades you know with doing that and then um, mid-teens uh, I think I ended up going to see Simple Minds of all people uh, with a few mates of mine. And I came back and dusted off the guitar, and you know, from from then until now, it's been mostly rock and roll bands. You know, okay. I've I've played in fifties and sixties rock and roll bands. You know, week in week out, ever ever since, pretty much. And how how did it? Yeah, how did it connect well, to Tennessee? Yeah, I've, I'd wanted to put a country band together for years, and then, but I kind of I didn't want to just be a general country band. I wanted to have a bit of an angle, and I was mad about the Nashville TV show. So I said, right, that's it. I'm going to put together a tribute band. So it's called Highway 65. And then I said, Jeff, do you want to fancy you know, diverting from rock and roll and doing a bit of country? Do you? And amazingly, he said yes. So um, so yeah. So we started fronting that. We sort of we were being all the characters all together, really, weren't we? I was being Rainer and Juliet and Scarlet, and you were being Will and Chip and everybody. Yeah, yeah. it was. You say it like it, it was. A, it, it was a bit of a no brainer for me because my, I was brought up. Um, I mean, certainly my parents were very much into the Mersey Beat sound when they were in their teens, and so there was a lot of re leftover records from that which I grew up with. Um, but I also grew up um, with a lot of country stuff, particularly uh, my dad was a massive fan of the first ladies of country, that the, the Tammies and the um, uh, Billy Joe Spears and obviously Dolly and, and, and people like that. Um, so that, that came in. And then I, I was always a big, big fan of really good songwriting, particularly story songs. Um, so uh, at one point we, I managed to play Cambridge Folk Festival with a band I was playing in and... Uh, um, um, Nancy Griffith was the headline and we were backstage oh. when she was going on and she was very very lovely uh, very tiny um, <laughs> and uh, she, I did say hello to her when she came came off stage and she, she was very sweet and said hello and that was about as much as I could my, my bravado would muster <laughs> I think because she was just stunning um, and then uh, when, so when you know and I was quite into um, 90s country particularly when the Dixie Chicks first uh, arrived on the scene because I was always been into audio and their uh, Nashville albums have always been recorded so yeah. well so they're always great show pieces uh, so when you know Victoria said about the, the Nashville band it was kind of an absolute no brainer really phew <laughs> <laughs> lucky 
<laughs> well, the, 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 the funny thing is, like Jeff, uh, like obviously I started in, in rock and roll, so there's a little bit of rock and roll in me. But I, when I when I was at school, like they asked me if I wanted to play a musical instrument. First one I said was violin, uh, and they said, "No, you're tone deaf, so you can't do it." <laughs> and then and then I asked for clarinet, so they gave me a trombone. Uh, so course. yeah, and uh, so me and my cousin ended up sticking it in the hedge and scaring people as we went past. But that was about it. Um, so when when you're writing your songs, do you do you tend to write together? Do you write separately? Do you uh, you know do, do you bring ideas to each other? How does it work? Or is there a, is there a regiment? I know everybody asks the same question, but it, oh, as a duo, no, right. I, I know how it was when I was with a little bit country. So it's it, it, it's slightly different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we tend to, it, it varies, uh, but generally we write separately. Jeff generally writes the lyrics and I generally write the music. Um, but we kind of, we have like a bare bones of ideas that come to each other and then then we sit down together and then we, we flesh it out and change bits together. So the initial ideas are separate, but then we, we bring it together and then we work on it together. Yeah, I think that the initial sparks tend to be definitely uh, one or the other. Um, it has worked both ways, but it tends to be, you know, lyrical ideas first and sometimes it will I'll just sit and thrash out pretty much the entire lyric and other times it'll be you know here's sort of what I think of as a chorus and a couple of verse ideas and what yeah. ends up will be quite different but um but and, and sometimes I'll pass over look like you know I, I hear it as a six eight or a, you know or, or, or you know or three chord trick or, or whatever kind of style and then Victoria takes that away and, and ignores most of that and, and does what she's <laughs> going to do really with it which is absolutely fine because it always works out you know it, it, the um there is the only difficulty with that approach is not because writing separately is because um Victoria obviously is a pianist and, and I'm a guitar player and there are things you can do on piano and can't do on guitar or and the other way around so sometimes because a lot of the time when we're out live, we only just have the guitar. We have to kind of morph, yeah. <laughs> you know, some things. But it, but it's quite challenging <clears throat> as a guitar player that way because you have to find ways around to do things um, that you would definitely wouldn't otherwise do. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a fair comment. Where do where do you think that most of your not where they come from, but where are you when most of your ideas come? <laughs> oh, you don't want to know. Yeah, I, I did. I, I, you've already answered my question because it happens to me as well, so that's fine. Well, <laughs> several of the several of the songs you find on our Spotify were were initially written in the shower. Um, just you, you know, you're absolutely minded going around your business, but but these things just come into your head. You're thinking about. I don't know. If, I think most people. Um, have discussions slash arguments with people while they're not around. You know, you. you, you I don't know what you mean. I have no <laughs> idea what you mean. And sometimes it comes out of that. You know, you're having yeah. a discussion with somebody about something. You know, maybe it's a re rehearsal of something you want to say, or or it's what you wish you would have said at the time. Um, and several have come, you know, from that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm slightly ashamed to say that's often where, I go, where where the ideas come from no, that's fine it's, it seems to be the bathroom is the is the key place happens to me all the time very very many different locations within the bathroom but we'll leave it there <laughs> um so we, we i've asked you to choose three songs uh on the for the spotify uh version of the podcast and what's the first song you've chosen who's chosen it and why have you chosen this track well, you go first. Okay. Um, I, I, I had such trouble choosing a song and I was going through lots of ones that were very sort of introspective and deep and then I decided in the end that I was going to pick the one song that whenever I listen to it, it just makes me feel happy. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world or how low I felt. I listened to this song and then immediately I just, you can't not feel happy. And it was the first song I heard from them. So it's a Zach Brown band song and it's Jump Right In. And it's, I just heard it on the radio one day about six, seven years ago. And I just as soon as I heard it, I just had to find out who they were because I just thought it was the most amazing song. So, yeah, so that's my choice. Jump right in. Well, there we go. We'll go to that now. So jump right in by Zach Brown Band coming up and we'll see you straight after. There you go. That was Zach Brown Band with uh, Jump Right In. Again, I'm talking to YouTube viewers, but you, you won't even know that that song existed because we, we don't play it on YouTube. Um, <laughs> so uh, another question for you guys. Uh, in regards to country music generally, um, you guys have been doing it for a while. How long have you been doing country music? Totally. I mean, it's been um, since obviously Nashville. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think seven years altogether. We've been doing. Yeah, that's right. About seven years. Yeah. Saying, yeah. So seven it, years. 
started the Nashville band and probably six years since we started Tennessee Twin. Yeah. Okay, so in that time, uh, there, there has been many different explosions within UK country. Do you, are you surprised at how much it's growing? Yes, I'm pleased and relieved to see it. Um, so when, when we first started doing it, it was very, very small and we, it took us ages to try and find people, um, just people like yourselves or you know, people like James. Um, but yeah, so now it's just, it's lovely. And you talk to people, just friends or family, just talking about stuff and suddenly they mention someone, like a friend of mine, my oldest friend in the world, suddenly the other day told me she was going to see Luke Holmes. And I was like, didn't even know you knew who he was. And and. Yeah, so so people are just discovering country music, and and like your dad will suddenly ring us up and say, "I just saw your friend Kezia on the television." Like, <laughs> I know. So, so it's really lovely. It's just everybody's starting to notice it. Mm. It's great. It's this groundswell, isn't it? I think one or two things have happened, uh, sort of at a, at a at a top level. Um, the first thing that's happened is that um, with the the growth of modern country, and I think the Nashville show actually has. Definitely yeah, a, a, yeah, definitely. A, has had a role to play in that. It's such a good TV series that we, we have a lot of friends who watch that aren't particularly into country music today, you know, but, but we're fascinated by the show and the process of recording and, and how the business works for, from that. Um, I think there was for a long time a sort of a bit of a reticence to admit you liked country um, in it with a lot of people um, there was a certain set of, of people who loved that music and they, they were kind of almost a community by themselves and you saw it working on the club circuit where each club would have a designated like once a month you know yeah. country and western yeah. night and that would be it with country and western band so uh, and that still exists of course very popular but the modern country thing um, I think has kind of swallowed up um quite a bit of the singer-songwriter genre yeah. um, because the country audience and the country business is is so accepting of that. And things like, the, the simple things like the, the songwriter's round format um, it has been massively popular. Um, we, we're very fortunate to have been uh, invited to play at the Cambridge Folk Club, which is a great club and, of course, has a long association with the Cambridge Folk Festival, which is obviously huge. Um, and we're regularly invited to play there and we, we put on a, a Nashville style um, writers round uh, what about a year and a half ago I suppose mm -hmm. uh, with our good friends um, Sarah Yeo and Donna Marie we had Sandy McClellan came in as our guest as well and they absolutely loved the format they'd never seen that and you'd think in folk particularly in the club yeah. folk circuit that that would be a thing but it's not um, and uh, it was so popular there, they invited us back uh, just recently. And we had um, Georgia Nevada, and we had Shay Rafferty, and we had Daisy Shoot. And it was just a brilliant night, really busy club. And, and so I think that's that side of music is what's, you know, it's kind of driving it as much yeah. as the, you know, the big touring side. No, that's yeah. I was I was totally mesmerised and into that, and I forgot what I was doing now. Um, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, we we've all done it, and we've gone out to Nashville. How how many places in Nashville did you would you say that you went to just because of the TV show? That was oh, just a throwaway did, question. Yeah. We did the coach oh, did you? Show, didn't we? we did the first time. <laughs> the first time we went over. Um, we were very fortunate. It's, it's fairly well known, but we won a songwriting competition, which was run by the city of Nashville and British Airways. And uh, we were kind of um, treated extremely well on the prize was to go over for CMA Fest, which um, I don't think we were quite prepared for the scale of that festival. Um, uh, but we certainly enjoyed it. And, um, you know, they took us to the Opry and to the Bluebird and to these wonderful, wonderful things. We were super duper uh, privileged. Um and we just thought on the Sunday, let's, you know, we knew there was a bus tour of all the sites. So we just thought, oh, well, let's just go do that. You know, it was, and it was great fun. It was so much fun. Yeah. And it was all afternoon, wasn't it? The yeah, rush, yeah. You just drove around yeah. everywhere and saw all the locations that you could easily get to. So, and then the second time we went back, we went and walked around a few of them ourselves. Didn't yeah, we? So we could sure. spend a bit we more time. We are now, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we did the same when we went out there. Um, we, we ended up staying in East Nashville uh, and we actually stayed in Casey Musgrove's house, but she wasn't obviously still oh. owning the house it was somebody else's by then but um, right. we were like ah, yes we were in Casey Musgrove's house but that could be a lie I don't know if that's true or not <laughs> um, right okay uh, second question before we go to the next song uh, with people coming into country now so new people coming into UK country now what would be your advice to those people just starting out 
Oh, well, patience, I think. I think a lot of, especially younger artists, are so desperate to just get on with things. And I think, especially in country music, I think if you've got a, more, a little bit more experience and you've taken the time to learn your craft, it's really valued, as opposed to in a lot of other genres where it's quite different. But, um, but yeah, and I think just reach out. It's such a friendly community, just people yeah. that perform and people that come along to gigs regularly. Just it's like one big family, and it sounds mm. like they say it on strictly, but it is like one big family. And if they could just get to know a few of us, and sort of things like the live in the living room gives back events, things like that, come along for the day and meet everybody mm. and just experience it. And you know, the chances are next time you'll be involved somewhere along the line because people are so welcoming and we want to hear new talent and, and discover people. Like about two years ago, we discovered Luke Flitt, didn't mm. we? We were on the same bill as him, and the moment he sang, we were like oh my gosh, he, he's what we've all been waiting for. And we're so excited and he's so young. And, it, and so, yeah, so we, we're desperate to see new people. Mm. We're excited about it. I think um, I'm going to pinch some advice from uh, Tim Minchin, uh, our <laughs> big fan. Um, the, he was doing a, a graduation speech at, at a college. Um, that's, it's on YouTube somewhere you can go find it. But he said... Um, people had asked him a lot, what's the secret of your success? And he said, honestly, I, don't, I have no idea. It just kind of one thing happened after another. But if, if he was giving advice uh, for people going into uh, the sort of creative arts, he said there was three things to, th- to, to, to think about. One, be really good at what you do. Yeah. You know, go out and learn. Never think you've learned, you know, that, that we all say it takes 10,000 hours to be the master of anything, apart from music and probably art itself, Um I don't think you master it in 10,000 hours. It's a lifelong pursuit. Um, But just be constantly trying to get better. And it doesn't matter how many people tell you that you're really good. Still try and get better. It's um, it, it's very easy to kind of sit back. Oh well, that's yeah, very happy, and you can play thousands of gigs and still be thinking, what's that chord that guy just played? You know, I really want to know what that is. Yeah. Um, the the second thing uh, was be yourself. Um, uh, you know, if you, you can try and mimic people, there's a whole market for that. You know, and and a very lucrative market for some people too. But if you're going to do write your own songs and you know uh, be yourself as an artist, then you need to not do that thing, not copy other people, you know, admire other people and ask what how they've got to where they are and, 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 and so on. But just stick with what it is that you do. You know, you need to do so. The, the industry is, is looking all the time for things that are fresh and new and different. You know, so if you're, you're as good as the last person doing exactly the same thing, well, that's no good. We've already had that. Yeah. Uh, so having faith in what you are and, and knowing what you are is really important, I think. And the last thing he said, which was a kind of uh, one of those really obvious things, but it, but it was nice to hear it from someone who'd been so successful, was be nice. You know, be the yeah, person yeah, yeah. That, that's professional, you know, that turns up on time, that's easy to work with, that entertains a crowd, that, that you know, that helps you, you know, promote things um, and, and, and works hard, you know, and I think... If we look around the the scene that we have now at the people who are being the more successful people, those things apply at one hundred percent to those to those people, and, and you, you you have to just take your hat off to them because you can see they've really worked at it. Yeah, that's fair enough. There we go, Tim Lynchon. Yeah, the the thing that came straight into my head was uh, his song Prejudice, but we won't talk about that one. Uh, if you don't know it, <laughs> if you don't know it, you should listen to it. It's a good song. Uh, we're going to go to the second song. Uh, so, Jeff, did you want to tell me what this is, who it is, and why it's been chosen, and who chose it? Uh, yeah, this is one. This is my choice. Um, this is a Miranda Lambert song. I'm a big fan of hers. Um, the it's it's a song called Waxahachie, uh, which is you know difficult to spell if you're uh, spelling challenge like myself. But I had to look it up. Um, but it's it's a. It, I don't think it could be a more classic country song in as much as. Uh, well, first off, it's about post breakup. You know, it's what to do. It's about you know having broken up with somebody, going back to the place that you 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 grew up yeah. and and um, uh, and that kind of thing. I first heard it. Uh, Victoria and I were depping for a couple of other bands, and we had gone on a Saturday night, literally in opposite directions, a couple of hours. You know, I went off into Norfolk, and she went off into the Midlands. And uh, I was coming back in the early hours of the morning through the lanes of of uh, of Norwich, and um, I heard about this art album she'd done called the Marfa tapes didn't know anything else about it fantastic um, album, yeah yeah, yeah. And, and I just put, put it on so it was 
absolutely pitch black dark trees up both sides of the car and for anybody who's heard it it's um or hasn't heard it rather it, it's literally three people sitting around a campfire with the noise of the campfire on the outside and they're singing the songs completely live and hearing that song in that environment at that time just was an atmosphere that that just reminds you without any glamour it's all about the music and the songwriting yeah. there we go that is uh, Miranda Lambert, Waxahatty, that's coming up now. There we go, that was Miranda Lambert with Waxahatty. Uh, if you haven't listened to the Martha Tapes, as Jeff said, though, fantastic album. Uh, it, it refreshed my uh, my love for music even more so after COVID, so, uh, or during COVID, I can't remember when it when it came out, but uh, my favorite, for some reason, my favorite song on that is Homegrown Tomatoes. I don't know why. Um, that is excellent. I just yeah. love it, I just love that song. Right then, guys. It is time now for the the, the big quiz. Uh, so we're going to find out what do they know. So, so who is it, who's sitting in the booth now? Are you both sitting in the booth? Have we decided? Share it. Yeah, okay, so this is the this is the one each. Yeah. this is the first time we've had two people sitting in the booth. So the the way this works is kind of like a, a music. Well, it's not. It's a trivia version of like uh, stars in fast cars with. Uh, uh, no, reasonably price cars, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, on on the old okay. Top Gear, um, we had a leaderboard uh, for ages since the first uh, episode of You Country. It's been James Vince sitting at the top with nine points. I know. Last week we nearly had a brand new winner uh, with Rhiannon Page, but she only managed to get nine points as well. Oh. So we have a joint leaderboard uh with james and rhiannon so let's see uh if tennessee twin can beat that now what is your chosen quiz that's the question <laughs> well it's not part of the questions but you know <laughs> it's uh, it's the big bang theory okay uh, that, that's the tv show not the scientific principle yeah, by the way nothing about the ah, <laughs> really oh no <laughs> well, the big fans of brian cox but i don't think we can ever go there okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put two minutes on the clock which i'll do uh, I'll do via, uh, you know, AI, which I hate. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go there and I'll just fire a load of questions at you. Uh, I think there's 15 questions in this one. I think that's enough time. It's two minutes on the clock and you just answer. Some are, some are multiple choice, some are not. Um, because I didn't create this quiz, all questions are deemed as correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, guys, are you ready? Yes. So, we'll have two minutes on the clock. So, Echo. Two minute timer. Two minutes, starting now. So what is Leonard's surname? Hofstetter. That's correct. In which US state is the Big, Big Bang Theory set? Is it Texas, California, or New Mexico? It's California. That is correct. Which actress portrays Penny? Is it- Ah, uh, that's Kaylee Kaylee Cuoco. Kaylee Cuoco, yeah, that is correct. Uh, how does, how, no, so who does Howard live with at the beginning of the show? Is it his mum, his dad, or Stephen Hawking? It's his mum. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. How many seasons of the Big Bang Theory are there? There are 12. That is correct. Who said our babies will be smart and beautiful? Oh, that was Leonard. That is correct. Who does Penny marry? Is it Rajesh? Penny. Sorry? So you? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I missed who you said. Oh, Leonard. Leonard, yeah, that is correct. Uh, where is Rajesh from? Is he from Pakistan, India or Indonesia? He's from India. Okay, which character goes to space? Is it Howard, Rajesh, or Amy? It's Howard. That is correct. Uh, which character's surname is Farrah Fowler? Is it Bernadette, Amy, or Leslie? It's Amy. That is correct. At the beginning of the show, who can't Rajesh talk to? Is it women, his mum, or Stephen Hawking? <laughs> it's women. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Where do Sheldon, Howard, Leonard, Raj, and Amy work? Uh, at Caltech. That is correct, the, or the California Institute California of Technology. California Institute yeah. of Technology, yeah. yeah. Uh, which actor portrays Sheldon Cooper? Uh, Jim Parsons. That is correct. Uh, what nickname did Howard give to Bernadette? Oh. Oh. Do you know this one? No. <laughs> We've stumped him. We've stumped him. Oh, I don't honestly know. I can't, I can't think. Do you, want to, do you want to pass and see if we can come back yeah, to that we'll one? Pass. Okay. Uh, what character? Uh, sorry, which character is from Texas? Oh, that's Sheldon. That is correct. So, last question. Going back to oh, we've just run out of time. 
<laughs> Echo, stop. So, let me just double check that I've got my maths right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's fourteen questions. You've scored thirteen. We have a brand new winner in Tennessee Twin. Well done. I mean, there are two of you, but it still doesn't matter because we asked you as if you were one person. The, the, so the 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 so it was fifteen questions. I beg your pardon. So it's fourteen that you've got. Um, oh, even so even better. Uh, yeah. So, did yeah. you the nickname the nickname? that Howard gave to Bernadette? No, Don't know. I can't remember. It, it, you're gonna kick yourself. It's just Bernie. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I will. I will just double check those. Those there. One, two, three, four, five. I should have numbered this. Six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. You've got 14 out of 15. So I'll congratulations. Take that. So yeah. uh, I think oh, yeah, yeah. everybody <laughs> should give Tennessee to a round of applause. James, no offense, but you're gone, buddy. You're gone. <laughs> that, there, there we go. Fantastic. So um, before we carry on with the last questions, final song, tell us uh, what you've chosen, who it's by, uh, and why. We've been a bit cheeky with the last one, really. A little bit, not yeah. Little bit. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one is actually one of ours. Uh, it's called Apple Tree, and it's our it's our latest release. It was out three weeks ago. Yeah, about that. Yeah, I've lost track of time now. Um, and yeah, so it, we wrote it basically to just say to people, just stop and think for a minute about those little moments in life that are actually really the big moments. And when when you're older and you're looking back on your life, it's really going to be those special little moments that you remember and the stand out so that that's what apple tree is all about there we go so this is apple tree by tennessee twin and we'll be right back so there we go that was apple tree by tennessee twin and we are talking to tennessee twin the new leaders of what do they know <laughs> which is absolutely fantastic um yeah i i'm, I'm so so uh, grateful for that because i don't have to keep saying james vince no offense james <laughs> um, so Guys, what are the highlights for you of 2023 and what's in store for 2024? Well, 2023 has been a great year, actually. Yes. We've, yeah, we've done some very really lovely gigs. Um, we did we did Buckland Boots for the first time. This yeah, year. We that really was very that. wonderful. Really that enjoyed it, yeah. lovely atmosphere. Um, we did the West Country Music Festival again with Sarah, um, which is one of our favourites because the atmosphere there is just beautiful. And I got to introduce the Wandering Hearts. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah absolutely just uh, we've been massive fans we were there the day they did their opry debut uh back in 2018 oh, complete wow. coincidence that's the the week, the week we happened to be there for cma fest and uh so um yeah very proud brits in the audience to see them come and play yeah. the opry but so to meet them uh absolutely lovely people and, and introduce them at that festival that was definitely one of the highlights for me i bet it was yeah yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can't remember anything else we did this year. <laughs> well, we did with your good self, Paul. We just recently, of course, the Bedford, which is always yeah. just such a wonderful day um, there. And uh, to headline that was was a real privilege and and really lovely. Um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a busy busy um, year this year. We've done a, a number of the foodies festivals again, which are always uh, great events. And uh, from very and, and very small gigs too. We've a little um, the, uh, sort of bar we play at occasionally. That, yeah, that's always a really lovely one too. So, yeah. So what? So what? Yeah, so next yeah. Year. So yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, I'm just interrupting you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm good at that today. Uh, next year, yeah, we um, well, yes, we're hoping for another busy festival season. We're um, in the process for applications going in at the minute and talking to people. Um, and we would like just saying the small gig we do, we really enjoy that. So we are we are looking to do some more sort of wine bar gigs and things next year because we just really love those listening audiences and people mm. sit and chat to us and ask questions and request songs and. We're really enjoying that side of things. So I think yeah. we're going to try and do yeah. some more of that next year as well. And um, and and new music. We're in the middle of writing our next single at the minute. Um, and the next two after that actually are underway. And uh, hopefully by the end of this time next year, we might even get an album out. You never know. You never know. We There's plenty of stuff for it. It's just, yeah, getting it, getting on with the work, really. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know that feeling. I'm, I'm hoping to do another album, but it might just have to be an EP for now. But we'll see. Um, guys, what are your socials so that people can contact you? Uh, we're dead easy to find. Tennessee Twin UK uh, are everywhere. Um, so, um, yeah, we've, uh, we, we, we mostly hang out and do stuff on Facebook and YouTube, uh, although we've just started doing a bit on 
TikTok. Uh, we don't do any jumping about in silly suits or anything like that. That's that's not really our thing. So I do. <laughs> so I don't know how well we're going to get down on TikTok. But we'll see. <laughs> Okay, uh, the final question for you, and it's one that I ask everybody. Uh, James will tell you about the time I asked uh, someone from Nashville this question, but we won't go into that. Um, if uh, Yeah, so I've asked you a load of questions. What question do you wish I'd have asked you, but I didn't? Ooh. Blimey. Oh, that's that a good question, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. See, James, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, we've never been asked that question before. Um, there we go. I do, I do like people often ask us uh, who, who in the country music scene would you most love to duet with, which I always think is quite an interesting. Mm. Um, go on. Yeah. No, you, no, you, no, you go first. Oh, I'm answering your question. Well, you now. can do. You better, better otherwise you're going to leave everybody hanging. <laughs> oh, let's see, when when I was here, I Ashley McBride is my hero, but I, I'm not quite sure I'd, I'd fit with her, but. Her, her duet partner, Carly Pierce, I think she and I actually vocally would actually sit together quite well, so I'm going to say Carly Pierce. <sighs> See, you know, for a fun male female duet, I'd, I'd love to duet with Miranda because I think she's a lot of fun. You're not allowed to. But apparently, I'm not allowed to. <laughs> so, um, as, from a musician's point of view, definitely uh, to play with the Zach Brown band, uh, just simply because their level of musicianship is, their vibe is just wonderful. Their songs that have so much warmth to them but their musicianship just we've seen them a few times is just dynamite um the other person i really like who uh who i just love to sit down and play with is a guy called charlie warsham who i think sort of maybe I've done, many people who might have heard of it's he's hosting the cma songwriters night okay next year yeah at c2c well. um he's just released an album of duets with um with his buddies who include people like luke combs and you know stuff like that so Oh, I'm, yeah. I know, yeah. Chat. Okay, I know, yeah. I know the guy. Oh, great. Yeah. great album. So, yeah, those are the sort of people that I'd, I'd just, yeah, be a dream to work with. Well, thank you very much, Tennessee Twin. It's been a, it's been a fantastic, uh, I shouldn't say really, Saturday afternoon to talk to you. Uh, no, no illusion uh, spared here. Um, guys, uh, thank you very much for coming on New Country. Hopefully you'll come back to defend your title. Um, uh, yeah. 14 out of 15 questions. Wow. Again, a round of applause for you guys. Uh, oh, it's absolutely thank fantastic. You. Um, I don't know what that says about our voice. Too much yeah, probably. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. It's just, uh, it's, it's been surprising. People have, have thought they were experts on something and then found out that they didn't actually know as much as they, they thought they did. So it's uh, it's been quite eye-opening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I was surprised that James knew so much about Jaws, but considering I thought his favourite film was Twister, Jaws. Oh, yeah. Dear. Oh really? Yeah, I thought his favourite oh. film was Twister, and I got it wrong. Um, <laughs> so, guys, I'm going to have to say goodbye because we're going to run out of time now. Um, so, so thank you very much. Thank so, you. Thank you for having us. Soon. Cheerio. Bye. Thank you. So there we go. That was Victoria and Jeff from Tennessee Twin on U Country. Thank you very much to those guys for coming on, and congratulations for topping the leaderboard on what do they know, James. You can now have a break and rest yourself from the pedestal that you've been put on for the last uh, six weeks or so. Uh, we will be back very, very soon with a brand new act. Uh, so until then, we'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>